Uh, I want to take my time to pray for a few people today. So we may not be able to finish this message in its entirety. So please be praying that God will visit us in an awesome way. In Jesus' name, amen. First John chapter 5, verse 4. First John chapter 5, verse 4. I read, it says, For whatsoever or whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. And we are blessed by the reading of God's word. I'm continuing with my series that I have titled Victorious Life in Christ Jesus. The Victorious Life in Christ Jesus. And this is part four. The Victorious Life in Christ Jesus. And this is part four. I believe that God's ultimate desire for his children is to be victorious. God wants you to be victorious. That's why Jesus conquered the grave for us so that you and I can know that it is possible to overcome the challenges of life. And like I started saying from Friday, that Christianity is a very easy lifestyle to live because Jesus became an example for us to follow. Like I said, that when you are in an examination hall and you know that your friend or your colleague is highly intelligent, you want to sit by him or her so that you can peep through their answers because you are sure and guarantee that they know the answers to all the questions. And so if they tell you question one is A, you put A. If they tell you question two is B, you put B. Why? Because you can see that they have been there, they have done it before, they know the answer. So Christianity is a very easy, easy easy life. Why? Because Jesus has done it. So all we have to do is copy what he has done. Are you following me? We have to just copy what he has done and write exactly what he has done. Jesus taught us how to walk upon water, how to walk upon unstable situations so that we can also walk upon unstable situation. How do we do that? By keeping our eyes on Jesus. By keeping our eyes on Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Jesus is the what? The author and the finisher of our faith. According to Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So we don't look outside of Christ. We look unto Jesus because from the beginning of our faith to the end of our faith is in Jesus. It's not outside of Jesus. You cannot add anything else to Jesus. Jesus is like a supermarket or a superstore that has everything you need in. When you walk in there, if you need a dress, you get it there. If you need oranges, apples, vegetables, they are there. If you need a shoe, it's there. Everything you need has been supplied in the supermarket. Everything we'll ever need in life is in Christ Jesus. Jesus said, if you need water, I am water. I am the fountain of life. If you are hungry for bread, I am the bread of life. If you are looking for a door to be open, Jesus said, I am the door. I am your open door. So everything you and I will ever need is in Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. Amen. I said it's in Jesus Christ. Amen. I said it's in Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why the victorious life is possible. I said it's possible. Amen. Because Jesus defeated the grave so that you and I can become victorious. And in the name of Jesus, the grace to move you from one level of victory to another level of victory comes upon you today. Amen. The days of defeat are over. The days of defeat are over. Amen. From one defeat to another, they are over. Amen. You have come into the season of victory. Amen. You have come into the season of victory. Amen. In the name of Jesus. How many of you want to be victorious? Amen. Shout, I am, I am victorious. So quick question we want to ask is what does it mean to be victorious? What does it mean? To be victorious means to exercise dominion over all challenges of life. So after today, you have no excuse to say, oh, pastor, this thing is overcoming me. No, you must overcome it because the seed of victory is in you. The seed of greatness is in you. Can Christ be overpowered by any circumstances. Oh. Even death could not hold him captive. <laughs> Even death could not hold him captive. He demonstrated to us that he has power over death. Somebody say, I will not die. Oh, say like you mean it. Say, I will not die. I will live to declare the glory of God. Maybe in your family in the past, when people get to certain age, they die, but minus you. Minus. You will not die. Yeah. I said you will not die. Yeah. You will live to declare the glory of God. Yeah. It doesn't matter what they have planted in that family. You are exempted. Yeah. I said you are exempted. Yeah. I said you are exempted yeah. in the name of Jesus. So let's quickly go and look at how to be victorious over impossible situations. You know, there are some situations that look like this one is impossible. When you go to the doctor and the doctor tells you, you are stage three, stage four of cancer. You have read all the cases. You have watched all the news. You've seen people around you. Stage two, they go. Stage three, they go. And they tell you you are at stage four. And they tell you you only have a week to leave. That looks like an impossible situation. But let's look at how Jesus conquered his stage three. He was in stage three, which means he has gotten to the point where he couldn't come out. But he demonstrated to us that even in your lowest level or the highest level of challenges, you can still be victorious. Amen. And so Matthew chapter 28 from verse 1 to 8. Let's go there quickly. Matthew chapter 28 from verse 1 to 8. The Bible says that now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb where Jesus was buried. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, they sealed the tomb with a big stone so that he could not come out. Because they were saying that ah, this Jesus said, he will die and on the third day he will resurrect triumphantly. But we are going to prove to him that he cannot come out. And so the Bible says that they put a big stone. They rolled, they put a big stone on his tomb. But in the midst of that, the Bible says that there was an earthquake. 
There are some earthquakes that comes from God. I don't know what to- stone they've rolled upon your tomb. There will be an earthquake. There will be a Holy Ghost earthquake. He will shake everything into being in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, that, and there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven. Angels are descending on your behalf. And they came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. Somebody say, sat on it. Anything you sit on means you have victory over it. This was a stone that could not be rolled by man. But the angel rolled the stone and the angel sat on that big stone just to prove to you that it is nothing before God. The Bible says that his countenance, the angel's countenance was like the lightning and his clothing was as white as snow. Glory be to God. And the gods shook for fear of him and became like dead men. I don't know who has been troubling you. After today, I said after today, I said after today, they will become like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the woman, do not be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen. As he said, come and see the place where the Lord lay. Somebody say he is risen. Because he is risen, you will also rise. You will also rise. The tomb will not hold you captive. You are coming out of that dead situation. Somebody say I will rise again. Now, whoever is looking for you among the dead, they've gone to the wrong address. They have gone to the wrong address because you cannot find the living among the dead. The seven, the Bible says, I go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples the word. Jesus is alive. That's what gives us confidence. That it doesn't matter where Satan thinks he has cornered me. I'm coming out. I'm coming out with a testimony. My testimony shall be permanent. Say a good amen. Amen. My testimony shall be permanent. Nothing will sit on my testimony in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's quickly look at how we can also become victorious over unstable situations. Sometimes situations can present themselves to you. They look so unstable. You turn left, instability. You turn right, instability. You wonder, what is happening? Have you ever been through a season of your life where all the problems of the UK found your address? (laughs) It's like one problem where they told another problem. (laughs) Let's go to his or her address today. Have you ever been through that situation? And you begin to wonder, God, where are you? One problem after the other. But God is testing your faith. When the problems are coming like that, it means your miracle is at the door. You are so close to the miracle. Many years ago, I remember where we used to live, they used to turn rushing the tap, tap water. They used to turn the tap off. Now, we don't want to talk about what uh, electricity. 
It's both electricity and tap, but when they turn the tap off, one of the ways we know water is coming is you open the tap and you put your ear on the tap. You put your ear on the tap and you begin to hear a sound from the tap. You'll be hearing a sound. That means there's no water coming, but it means water is coming. It's coming from far, but it's coming. Are you following what I'm saying? Why? Because once you begin to hear that sound, you know that water is coming. It doesn't matter how long it takes, water is coming. I said all that to say to you, it doesn't matter how long the tap has been closed for. It doesn't matter how dry your tap has been. It doesn't matter how dried your life has been of testimonies. I can hear the sound of an abundance of rain. It's coming. Miracles are coming. Blessings are coming. Breakthroughs are coming to this church. I can't hear your amen. What happened to your amen? They are coming. They are coming. I said they are coming. I speak to you as a man who has heard God. Your miracle is coming. It's coming with speed swiftly. Nothing will stop it. Nothing will hold it. It's just a matter of time. You begin to see water flow one more time. The Bible says in the book of 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 16, it says you will not see wind. Neither will you see rain. But all you have to do is dig ditches. 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 16. Just dig ditches. You are believing God for rain, for water. Just dig ditches. Make your ditches. Keep digging. Yes, the, the, the water is not there yet, but keep digging because water is coming. He says you will not see rain. You will not see wind, but your ditches will be filled with water. And the sign of water is a sign of life. Water is a sign of life. Water is a sign of life. That means life is coming to that situation again. Say a living amen. So it doesn't matter what you're going through. Keep hope alive. He said, Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. There was a time I finished preaching here that God has taken care of all your Red Sea. Somebody was going through some severe immigration issue. Severe. As a matter of fact, they picked her up by immigration. They put her in detention center. They were about to deport her. The following day, we went to home cell, prayed. And I called her and said, you have been released. He said, Pastor, don't lie to me. <laughs> she said, don't lie to me, Pastor. I said, you have been released. Like Peter, we went to home cell. We prayed that they should release her. Her case was impossible. She had just joined the church. Fresh. Somebody said, I came to this church called Solution and all I'm having is problem. But God has to show you miracles through the problem. I told her you have been released. Don't look at the Red Sea. He said, oh, Pastor, the Red Sea is not opening. Pharaoh is behind me. I said, go forward. God said, go forward. God said, go forward. Yeah. Jesus didn't allow the grave to hold him. I'm sure within the three days, Satan was laughing. Satan was smiling. Satan said, we got him where we wanted him. Ha, we got him. They were having a party, celebrating their victory. But the next thing, before they realize, the Bible says that the same spirit that resurrected Christ from the dead dwells in you. So that same spirit resurrected Christ. That same spirit is in you. Amen. Don't pity party over your issue. Who am I preaching to this morning? 
Who am I preaching to this afternoon? Maybe I'm preaching to people online. Who am I preaching to today? I came to tell you, listen, listen, the sound of victory is closer than you think. The sound of victory is closer than you think. And the camp of your enemies will hear the sound of your victory. Sometimes they will even come to your house to come and check this victory that they are talking about. Where is it? So everybody that comes to your house is your friend. You think everybody that comes to this church loves this church? Ah, some are sitting here to say, let's check this, this resurrection thing he's preaching about. <laughs> let's see how, how he's going to resurrect. Ah, you're a liar. Satan is a liar. I said, Satan is a liar. Your victory is eminent. Your victory is eminent. You will be victorious over every unstable situation. Finally, as we close, let's look at how David was anointed for a victorious lifestyle. How David was anointed for a victorious lifestyle. First Samuel chapter 16 Verse 11 to 13, David taught us that it is possible, no matter the background you've come from, that you can be victorious. You might have been left in the desert. They think they've left you. They think they've thrown you to the lions and the wolves, but they don't know that God is working on you. God is working on this commission. I said, God is working on this commission. Where we are, God is working on our character. Very soon, when you see 10,000 people rush into this commission, you will know that when God was taking us through this situation, he was only preparing us for our day of victory. Amen. First Samuel 16, verse 11 to 13. The Bible says that, and Samuel said to Jesse, are all these the young men? Then he said, there, is, there remains yet the youngest. And there he is keeping the sheep. I love that. Don't stop keeping the sheep. No matter where they push you to, the backside of life, don't stop serving God. Keep serving God. Listen, your victory is in serving God. If you don't serve God, how can he declare you victorious? God is a judge of all judges. And he is on your side. The Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? So why don't you serve this, this judge, the greatest judge, so he can declare you victorious Amen. before even the situation shows up. When you go through challenges, that's not the time to say, ah, I've been serving this God all these years. I haven't seen anything, so I'll stop serving him. No, keep serving do you know that I have seen people in this church who are so close to their victory, they've been serving for years, so close to their victory, one day they stop serving. And what they have been believing God for years, which was just about to be made manifested, they lost it. They lost it at the verge of stopping serving God. David was keep serving. He was looking after the sheep. His father was so confident that on the desert, he would still be looking after the sheep. He said he was on the field looking, taking care of the few sheep. Verse 12, the Bible says that, so, oh, I love verse 11. Still, he says, send and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes. Ha <laughs> ha. Who am I preaching to this hey, afternoon? God will not sit down until you receive the victory. Hey, God will not sit. The Bible says that when God stands on his throne, he's looking to give you the victory. Hey, God will not sit down until he gives you the victory. Hey, so they sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, arise. Anoint him, for this is the one. There's going to be an anointing that is going to come upon you today as we pray. It will be a victory anointing. Hallelujah. 
Then someone took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. When the spirit of God came upon him from that day forward, the spirit of God moved him into victories. From that day, nobody was able to defeat David. He stood before Goliath. He defeated Goliath. The whole nation was running away from Goliath. But David stood because of this anointing. He was able to overpower and overcome Goliath. What am I saying? There's a dimension in God. When God declares you victorious, it doesn't matter the magnitude of the problem. It's day I proposed to my wife. She said to me, do you know I may not be able to give you children? I said, why? Because she said, one of my ovaries is removed. I said, well, God doesn't need an ovary. God didn't need a man to birth Jesus. In that, in that restaurant, you know, I was expecting a yes, but I got a no. She didn't say yes. I, I don't know if whether she took the ring or not. I, took, I put my ring back in my pocket. <laughs> uh, uh, my student's money, my little money, bend down, nail down in that nice restaurant. London Bridge, Cafe Rouge. <laughs> Glory be to God. Amen. I had nobody to take a video. I would have played the video for you. But it took a long time before she said yes. Long. Long. One day we were walking on the park. Hackney, London. Then she said, you know that thing you ask in the restaurant? I'm saying yes. I say yes to what? Say, explain <laughs> properly. <laughs> because I fasted. I fasted before I proposed. I fasted. I fasted. She said yes. On that big pack, I started screaming. She said yes. <laughs> she said yes. I was jumping and screaming. She said yes. I don't care who was looking. She said yes. But finally, when we got married, went to honeymoon, came from the honeymoon, the God of Sharp Sharp showed up. <laughs> Somebody who said I could not have babies. And to even make it worse, in the first trimester of the pregnancy, a doctor specialist told us she has to lose her eye or lose the baby. I said, in this family, we don't lose anything. Now think about the challenges we have been through before we came here. Now the devil wants to put his dirty foot in there. But we didn't give up. God gave us the victory. Right there. She said she couldn't have a baby. Because she doesn't have an ovary, later on, three babies came through the same ovary. We didn't know she goes to do a test finally. Finally, both ovaries are there. Perfect. Perfect. Why are you sitting like unbelievers? Wow, do we have a lot of unbelievers in this church? Both ovaries were there, perfect. Now I'm talking about an ovary that was surgically removed, cut off. We prayed in that restaurant because I believed in this God, that he is a creative God. 15 or 13 or 14, 13 years later, the ovary had grown back, perfect. Oh, God put a new one there. What am I saying? Don't allow the situation you are in to put you off. We serve a living God. He can give you the victory. He gave Jesus the victory and he will give you the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you receive it today? 
come on, let's give Jesus some praise. Oh, let's give Jesus a better praise. Hallelujah. Say with me, I am, I am victorious. Oh, say like you mean it. Say, I am victorious. I am victorious. In the name of Jesus. Now, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. I believe the resurrection power is going to break loose in our midst. In the name of Jesus. Let's rise up on our feet. Talk to God. Talk to God. begin to pray. We're going to pray for these people here. Something new is about to break forth. Something new is about to break forth. Something new is about to break forth. Something new is about to break Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Pale gravosi krivala zapranta. The resurrection power. 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 Jesus, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. 
Look upon your people, Lord. Ikavonde le pasati le kravolenika razebonde le krevando. We decree victory. We decree victory. We decree victory. We decree victory. Rapa ke sele pronte. Rage balage valaga vazo bonde le kreva. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. That which you are spoken concerning your people. Bring it to pass. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands towards heaven. Do we have oil? Can we have some oil, please? Hallelujah. towards heaven church stretch forth your hands towards them let's pray for them I pray for you today anything anything that is sitting on your destiny is shattered today in the name of Jesus you will flourish you will flourish in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I release you to flourish you will do a thousand times more what your parents couldn't do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you. May this anointing cause her to begin to move forward. Move forward. In Jesus' name. Amen. Look at me. Listen. You haven't started yet. Don't put a cap on yourself. You see, today's prayer, God is breaking the limitations. God is breaking the limitations over your life. The limitations you have placed on you, God is removing it. In the name of Jesus. You are going to be very, very, very successful. Very, very, very successful. In the name of Jesus. That's what I'm prophesying over you today. In the name of Jesus. Father, bring it to pass. Father, bring it to pass. Give her the boldness to step into new waters. To do new things. In the name of Jesus. I break that spirit of inferiority complex. I break it. 
rapper, where your parents are now. You are going to break those records in the next two years. In the next two years. God will put greatness in your hands. In Jesus' name, nothing will destroy you. You will not be destroyed. God is with you. In Jesus' name, go and flourish. Give Jesus some praise. God bless you. God bless you. Flourishing is coming. You have been in a season of drought. But God says he's bringing flourishing. Flourishing. Why are you worried? The God who did it before will do it again. He's done it before. He will do it again. Your heart desire will be made manifest. Before the end of this year, you are entering into a thousand times more. Your business will flourish. The works of your hands will flourish in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Let's pray. Let's pray. Uh, is it okay that we pray today? Is it okay? Is it okay? All right. All right. The two of you, please come here. Come here. Come here. Please kneel down. Please kneel down. Can I have the pastors surround this couple for me, please? Now let's stretch forth our hands towards these two couples. Let's pray for them. Let's pray for them. Oh, yes. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Zazi Patale Kronvoneleza, Ane na Kovo Zotilasa, Me Kravalo Zobro, this altar has never failed. You are the God of all flesh. There is nothing you cannot do. There is nothing you cannot do. There is nothing you cannot do. Rata ke bala zabro ke lemre le gavalo kobo se tenala ne meka le zabro ne le zikaba. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Can I have oil? Can I have oil, Father? I anoint your son. I separate him from the past. From every past mistakes. I separate him from the past. I release him into your destiny. Therefore, the past will not haunt him. Pharaoh, you have no power over this one. He is out of Egypt. Therefore, you will not come after him. I speak concerning his health. Perfected. Father, his health is perfected. From the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. In the name of Jesus. You will not die. You will live to declare the glory of God. You will live to declare the glory of God. The glory of God in the name of Jesus. In the name 
of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Death could not hold you down. Rakapa se kribeles. Thank you, Lord. You are Sense them. Lord, perfect everything that concerns them. We break every generational curses that runs in their families. We release them into your generational blessings. We thank you. I call it done. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Congratulations. Congratulations. Let's give Jesus some praise. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, let's give Jesus some praise. Hallelujah. Let's just thank God. Open your mouth and begin to thank God. and begin to thank God. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you for what you began. Friday, Saturday, and today, Sunday. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give Jesus some praise. Hallelujah. I said give Jesus some praise. Amen. Amen. All right. We've come to the end of the service.